Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and today I'm going to be talking about nuclear reactions. Up to this point in physical science, we've mostly been talking about chemistry and chemical reactions, but there's a whole other group of reactions called nuclear reactions. And people, um, they're no less important, but they maybe are a little less understood. In other words, the nuclear reactions, the fusion reactions found in the sun, are producing the energy that create our food and the light that's coming in this window right here. And so in this podcast, I'm going to try to explain nuclear reactions and where they come from. Now, to understand nuclear reactions, you first have to understand the four fundamental forces in nature. Um, the, t the, nat the, the two major forces that most of you are familiar with are going to be um, gravity and then electromagnetism or the electromagnetic force. Um, now, what is gravity? Gravity holds you where you are. And so you stick to the Earth because there's a gravitational force that's pulling you down towards it. This was first identified by Newton. The neat thing about it is if we were to shoot you into space and you might be way out here in space, there still is a gravitational force that's holding you towards the, uh, towards the planet. Um, Gravity's cool in that it acts over a huge distance, but it's a relatively weak force. In other words, if we zoom down in here where your foot is, so if we look right down here where your foot is, I'm going to try to try your foot. Your foot looks like um, this, we'll say. Um, the reason you don't sink through the floor and actually move to the center of the Earth is that there is an electromagnetic force here. So there's all these electrons in your foot and all these electrons in the floor and they're repulsing each other. In other words, my fingers don't move through each other because there's an electromagnetic force pushing them apart. Now, um, a scientist by the name of Maxwell was able to take the idea of electricity, which was pretty mysterious, combine it with this idea of magnetism, and so we now combine those into one electromagnetic force. And so the two forces that you're familiar with, just walking around forces, are going to be the gravitational force and electromagnetic force. But when we get down to the lower, smaller level, at the, at the level of the nucleus, we find that there are two more forces. Those are called the strong and the weak nuclear forces. So if we look down here in the nucleus, inside the nucleus, let's say these red ones are the protons. The protons have a positive charge. And the neutrons have no charge, or they have a neutral charge. And so you would think with the electromagnetic force, all these positive charges in here in the nucleus are actually going to make them push themselves apart. Now, why doesn't that occur? The reason that doesn't occur is that there are all these strong nuclear forces that are holding all these atoms together, or excuse me, the nucleons, the protons and neutrons together. And so the strong nuclear force are all the forces that hold together the nucleus. It wants to fly apart, but these nuclear forces are holding it there. And, and that's the reason why as atoms get larger and larger and larger and they have more protons in it, we actually have to have more neutrons in the center. There's like a perfect number of neutrons compared to the number of protons you have just to hold the nucleus apart. The problem with the strong nuclear force and the reason that you don't deal with it is it only acts over a very small distance. It's right here in the middle. Um, the last force is called the weak nuclear force. Weak nuclear force um, is, is, is crazier yet. Um, sometimes, let me clear this off for a second, sometimes one of these neutrons will actually turn into a proton. So how do you go from a neutron to a proton? Well, what you give off is an electron. Electron which has no mass but has a negative one charge. And so what is accountable for that? It's actually quarks inside this neutron and the proton that are changing, but it's this weak nuclear force that cause, causes that to occur. And then sometimes even something weirder than that happens. Sometimes we'll have um, one of these protons actually turn into a neutron. And what that does is it gives off a positron. And so when it does that, we have another form of beta decay. But both of those are caused by um, weak nuclear forces. And so this chart came from our book, but I think it's a good way to kind of talk about the differences between the uh, chemical reactions and then nuclear reactions. And so in chemical reactions, what are the players? The players in chemical reaction reactions are the valence electrons. In other words, in all the reactions we've talked about to this point, it's the electrons out here, the electrons on the outside of the atom that actually determines a chemical reaction, what reacts with what. And that's why the periodic table looks the way it does. In a nuclear reaction, however, in a nuclear reaction, it's going to be the nucleons that are at play. And so what are the nucleons? The nucleons are the protons 
and the neutrons that are found in the nucleus in a chemical reaction. Okay, what starts a um, chemical reaction? Well, to start a chemical reaction, you have to have two reactants, and you have to somehow get their valence electrons close enough to each other so that you can actually have a chemical reaction. What's one way we could do that? Well, we could add pressure to the system. If we squeeze these reactants towards each other, they're more likely to react. We could increase the temperature, and that's going to make them move around more quickly and more likely to bounce into each other. Or another way we could do that is we could add a catalyst to that. A catalyst is something that's going to lower the activation energy, uh, change in uh, energy due to activation. And what that does is it lowers this barrier of energy that must be uh, overcome in order for a reaction to occur. What about in a nuclear reaction? In a nuclear reaction, there's two things that could start a nuclear reaction. Number one, we could start with particles that are moving fast enough. So if we bombard the nucleon with other particles, protons for example, we can actually start a reaction. Or if we get huge temperature increases. If we increase the temperature, then we can have some nuclear reactions as well. And that's why we can have the sun, and the sun has enough mass to generate that kind of temperature, but we don't have fusion reactions taking place on our planet. What about the end then? What do we create at the end of a chemical reaction? We create bonds, or there are new bonds that are formed. Well, what's formed in a nuclear reaction? In a nuclear reaction, we're going to form new, not bonds, but since we're changing the amounts of protons, we're going to end up with new atoms. Uh, the last type is the amount of energy. The amount of energy in a chemical reaction is going to be really small. Now, it, it, you wouldn't say that dynamite is a small amount of energy that's released, but it's relatively small compared to the amount of energy we get from a nuclear reaction. In a nu nuclear reaction, we're going to get a huge amount of energy. Um, why do we get a huge amount of energy? It actually requires talking a little bit about this equation. So you may be familiar with this, e equals mc squared. Um, so this is Einstein's famous equation. What does it mean? Well, F M stands for the mass. C stands for the speed of light. And so what do you know about the speed of light? The speed of light is a huge number. And then we're squaring it. So we're even making that number bigger yet. And so what Einstein said is that you can't create mass. You can't destroy mass, but you can convert mass into energy and energy back into mass. And so you can take a small amount of mass, like the mass inside my finger, and you can create a huge amount of energy from that. And that's all that energy that's found inside the sun we get um, in that kind of a way. We could take reactions and put them into two different types. We have, first of all, a fission reaction. In a fission reaction, what you have is a particle that's bombarding a um, atom, an atom that's radioactive, in this case it's uranium-235, and what that does is it converts that into another form of uranium, but it releases more of these particles, and those particles will smash, those, those uh, parts of, par of atoms are going to smash into other atoms, which is going to cause this chain reaction. So this is actually a fission weapon. This is the bomb that was dropped on, uh, I think this is on Nagasaki. Um, and that's a fission reaction. And so inside the bomb, you had to have something that's able to, to create these flying particles initially. And then once you start it, it's, it's like a chain reaction. YouTube has some great videos of a number of different uh, mousetraps set up, set up with two ping pong balls on each mousetrap. And once it gets hit by one ping pong ball, that's going to cause those two to fly, and that hits four. And that's a fission reaction or a chain reaction. The other major type of a, a reaction that we have is fusion reactions, and so this is actually the opposite taking place. In a fusion reaction, what we have is two different particles. In this case, these are protons that are fusing together, and they're making hydrogen. This is actually deuterium because it has uh, one neutron. Those neutrons will fuse together to make this, which is helium-3, so this is helium with two protons, one neutron. These will then convert into something called beryllium-6, which is highly unstable and then eventually converts to uh, regular helium. And so helium has less mass than the four original protons that were used to create it. And remember, 
according to Einstein's theory, equals mc squared, the tiny amount of mass that's lost when we convert those protons into helium, or the hydrogen into helium, is given off in the form of energy. And that energy given off the sun comes from fusion. Now, what would we like to have? On our planet right now, we only have fission reactors. And so we can only make electricity using that process of nuclear fission. The nice thing that we would like to be able to do is just take hydrogen that we have on our planet and fuse that into helium. Because there's so much hydrogen here, we have almost an infinite um, source of energy. The problem with that is you have this barrier of temperature. We have to get enough temperature increase so we can actually have fusion taking place on our planet. Um, most scientists think this is going to be decades away before we can have that. But the nice thing is once we get a fusion reaction like that, we could do away with the fossil fuels that we use today and, and the chemical reactions that they have. And so that's nuclear reactions. I'll talk a little bit more about uh, radioactivity and carbon-14 dating in the next two podcasts. Uh, I hope that's helpful.